Hi guys, Olive here. In today's video, I would like to talk to you about what books have been my favorite books that I have read since I started on BookTube. Around this time last year, both Jen Campbell and Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings made videos like this, where they looked at their favorites lists for the past however many years, and they tried to figure which of the books on those lists were the absolute best of the best. You may not know this, but I am quickly approaching my five year anniversary of having this channel. I have been making videos consistently on this channel since January of 2015. And as such, I have five years worth of favorites lists that I can go through and figure out which books have been my favorites over the past five years. So I went back to all of my old favorites videos. I wrote down all of the titles that I discussed in those videos. And I figure we'll go year by year starting in 2015, take off the ones that I know aren't all time favorites, keep the ones around that I think have the possibility of being all time favorites. And then we'll look at what books remain after all of that and see which ones make that ultimate list. So if we're starting in 2015, this was the one and only year that I combined my fiction and nonfiction favorites into one list. Every year after that, I split them up because I kind of felt like they didn't really belong together. Like I would never pit my fiction favorites against my nonfiction favorites. They occupy two separate spaces for me. If you see me looking down, it's because I'm consulting my list and it's on my laptop here. But my 10th favorite book of 2015 was Nurture Shock by Poe Brown and Ashley Merriman. That book was so much fun. I was working as a nanny at the time, so it definitely resonated a lot with me. Really interesting concepts, especially if you have kids or work with kids, but definitely not an all-time favorite. Number nine was Murder at the Brightwell by Ashley Weaver, the first book in my beloved Amory Ames mystery series. I don't know if I'll consider this one an all-time favorite. I think I'll keep it on the list for now because I love that series. I read the new one every single year but I don't know if it can compete with some of the other fiction that's going to be on some of the other favorites lists. We will see. Oh man, number eight is Selfish, Shallow, and Self-Absorbed, which is an essay collection about not having kids, not wanting kids. I know this one is currently on my top 10 favorite nonfiction books of all time video. I would say I've read books since I've made that video that would probably boot this essay collection off of there. I do really love it. I did definitely really love it at the time when I first read it, but I don't know if it can stand up to some of the other nonfiction now. I think we'll keep it on for now. Number seven of 2015 was An Uncommon Education by Elizabeth Purser. I loved that novel that year and I definitely still do. It was one of the very first times that I saw myself in a main character. Like I'm a very non-emotional person. I'm highly logical, but most characters aren't that way because most people aren't that way. <laughs> it also has that kind of secret history campus novel setup that I love so much. It's why I included this book in the secret history-esque book recommendations video I did recently. Is it an all-time favorite though? Probably not. Number six was The Likeness by Tana French, which I actually used as a stand-in for the first five books in the series since I read them all that year. The sixth book didn't come out until the next year, so that one wasn't included on the 2015 list. But I love The Likeness. It probably still is a favorite. It's another secret history-esque one. You can kind of see what I was in the mood for in 2015. The Likeness is definitely staying around. Number five was City of Thieves by David Benioff. Oh, I feel so betrayed by David Benioff. I'm not even gonna go into my feelings on the last season of Game of Thrones. That's not what this video is about. Is that an all-time favorite? If I was making a list of my all-time favorite Russian historical fiction books, then yes. All-time fiction, no. Number four was Uprooted by Naomi Novik. Yes, an all-time favorite. Yes, I already know that's gonna make the final list. Number three was The Interestings by Meg Wallitzer. Man, I read some really, really good books in 2015. Yeah, The Interestings is staying around. I still think about that book all the time. My favorite Wallitzer novel that I've read thus far. My second favorite book of 2015 was Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff. Is that a favorite? This is so hard. Okay, well, every time I think about Fates and Furies, I think about 2015. I read a lot of it in a Panera when I was on the college campus that I was attending because I was going back to school to study accounting. I loved Fates and Furies. I still think about it all the time, but I don't think I consider it a favorite. Do I consider it a favorite? 
No, I don't think I do. And my favorite book of 2015 was The Czar of Love and Techno by Anthony Mara. I love that book. I still love that book. I really need to reread it. It's sticking around. All right, moving on to my fiction list for 2016. In at number 10 was Akata Witch by Nnedi Okorafor. I really liked that book. It was a YA fantasy. Definitely not a favorite, but really good still. In at number nine was The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Efon. That book was so good. It's definitely one you have to read if you love books about books. I could tell the star Starless Sea was trying to take some inspiration from it. But again, I won't go into talking about the Starless Sea again. Is that a favorite? I'm going to keep it around for now because I really loved it. Number eight was Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. That book was all the rage around book two when I got started. It was fantastic. I vividly remember finishing the audiobook for Burial Rites during Dewey's 24-hour readathon, and I think it was the spring of that year. I was sitting in my big reading chair, which is actually right in front of me right now, wearing my husband's giant gaming headphones, staring off into the distance, listening to everything go down, completely fixated. That all being said, I'm not convinced this one is a favorite. I do think about it sometimes, but probably not enough to qualify it as being an all-time favorite. Number seven was Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I remember reading that one in like a giant buddy read situation. We had this big boxer chat going. That was such a cool experience. I loved it at the time. I still think of it very fondly. I definitely want to read more Daphne du Maurier, but I don't think that it's on my mind enough. I don't feel the pull to reread it like I do with all-time favorites. Number six was Euphoria by Lily King. Oh man. This one might make it onto the all-time favorites list. It's so weird how books sit with you that I think this is going to be an interesting experiment with this video because I think some of these books are all-time favorites because they've stuck with me in a certain way, which means that the 2019 books aren't going to have that exact same feeling to them. I'm not going to have that data to figure out whether or not they're an all-time favorite, but that's just kind of the name of the game with this type of a video. I remember Euphoria so vividly. I remember some of the lines. I remember distinctly what I felt when I was reading that book. I really want to reread it. I think this is an all-time favorite. Number five was Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, which was another booktube favorite, especially I think in 2015. I'm pretty sure it was released in 2015. I really liked it. It's not an all-time favorite. Number four was Back to Moscow by Guillermo Arades. That's the one that I reviewed while taking vodka shots. That was a good time. Again, if I were ever to make a list of best books set in Russia, which I probably should do someday, this book would be on there but it is not one of my ultimate favorites. Number three was Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I had not read Pride and Prejudice prior to 2016. In fact, I knew absolutely nothing about it besides the fact that some people like Mr. Darcy. I still don't know how I did that. Number two was The Unchangeable Spots of Leopards by Christopher Jansma. That was such a mind-bending, twisty-turny, weird book. It's so short, but there's so much going on in it. It's so hard to describe that book. I loved it. I still do think about it. I want to reread it, but I don't think I love it enough. And the same goes for my top fiction book of 2016, The Ecliptic by Benjamin Wood. It was wonderful. I wouldn't mind rereading it, but I just don't think I loved it enough. I think I was discovering in 2016, though, that I like my fiction to be thought provoking. I like to be able to think things about what the author is trying to say. It seems 2016 was the year I was beginning to learn my taste as a fiction reader. On to 2016 nonfiction. In 2016 and 2017, I only did my top five favorite works of nonfiction. I wasn't reading enough nonfiction to make a top 10 list, so there are only five. But my fifth favorite nonfiction book of 2016 was The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. This is probably the book I recommend the most, especially for people looking to get into nonfiction. It is so accessible. It's really entertaining. It's another one that I included in my top 10 favorite nonfiction books video that I'm not sure could stand up against some nonfiction favorites that I've read since then. So as of right now, I'm taking it out of consideration. My number four favorite of 2016 was H is for Hawk by Helen MacDonald. It is so weird seeing some books that I know are going to make the final list, that I know are all-time favorites, be so low in my rankings the actual year that I ranked them. It definitely goes to show that staying power is really, really important for me and how much I love a book. Because I love H is for Hawk. 
I think about it all the time. I have since gone on to call it probably my favorite nonfiction book of all time. So that one definitely stays. Number three was Moonwalking with Einstein by Joshua Foer. That's another one that's currently in that top 10 nonfiction books video that I think actually is going to keep its place there. I love that book. This is what baffles me. My second favorite nonfiction book of 2016 was Unmentionable by Therese O'Neill, which I loved. It was fascinating, but it has not really stood the test of time. Why did I rank that one number two? But my number one favorite of that year, I definitely still agree with, The Soul of an Octopus by Cy Montgomery. This might be my second favorite nonfiction book of all time. All right, on to 2017 fiction. Number 10 was The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot, which is a great book. I definitely enjoyed it because I love George Eliot. It also happens to be Jen from Insert Literary Pun Here. That's her all-time favorite book. It's not my all-time favorite book, and it probably won't be on my list. Sorry, Jen. Number nine was The Night Watch by Sarah Waters. I know by 2017, I was firmly in that tradition of reading a Sarah Waters book every single December, and so it made it onto my favorites list. But that's not even my favorite Sarah Waters book, so we're gonna leave that off. Number eight was Sweet Bitter by Stephanie Dandler. I really loved that book. I know it was very divisive. Some people absolutely hate it because it definitely is kind of pretentious, but I still think about it, especially when I'm having a glass of wine, and I definitely liked the book more than I liked the TV show they made out of it. But it's definitely not an all-time favorite. Number seven was The Strays by Emily Biddo. Absolutely loved it. Not a favorite. Same for Tuesday Nights in 1980 by Molly Prentice. Such an interesting book with the synesthesia element. This next one is harder because number five was Longborn by Joe Baker, which is a tremendous retelling of Pride and Prejudice. Can I have both Pride and Prejudice and a Pride and Prejudice retelling on my favorites list? That's the question. We'll keep it around for now. Number four was The Glorious Heresies by Lisa McInerney. I still think about this book all the time. I loved it. I want to reread it. I'm keeping it around to consider for my favorites list. This next one is tricky because number three was If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio, which is another secret history type one. And I loved it so much at the time and definitely still do recommend it. But I don't think about it very much anymore. It was almost like that atmosphere sucked me in totally when I was reading it. And I definitely remembered it for a period of time afterward. But it's kind of faded. So I don't think this one is sticking around. That's so disappointing. Number two was Margaret the First by Danielle Dutton. I have a tattoo from this book, so it's staying. And my number one fiction book of 2017 was Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell, which is currently tied for my all-time favorite classic. So that one also stays. All right, 2017 nonfiction. Number five was How Music Got Free by Stephen Witt. This is an intensely underrated nonfiction book. I recommend it so highly. I'm keeping it around for now because I seriously love it that much. Number four was Cannibalism by Bill Shutt, which was surprisingly a really fun book considering the subject matter. I did a drunk review for that one as well. That was so much fun to do. <laughs> I'm gonna remove that one from consideration because I don't think it's an all-time favorite. I don't think it's one of my favorites of the past five years. And also because I would feel kind of weird putting it on that list, so. Number three was I Contain Multitudes by Ed Young, all about microbes. It's not a favorite, but I still do geek out every time I think about that book or talk about that book. Number two was The Man Without a Face by Masha Gessen, an extremely interesting look into the psychology of Vladimir Putin, but not a favorite. And my number one nonfiction favorite of 2017 was Being Mortal by Atul Gawande. This one absolutely stays. I love this book. Now on to 2018 fiction. Number 10 was The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. Totally adorable. Not a favorite. The Incarnations by Susan Barker, which is still one that I cannot get out of my head but not one I'll include on my favorites list. Number eight was The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri. This is so difficult because that book is amazing, but I know it's not an all-time favorite. Why did I choose to do this? This is so hard. Number seven was The Female Persuasion by Meg Wallitzer, a wonderful Wallitzer novel, but not as good as The Interestings and therefore not a favorite. Number six was Villette by Charlotte Bronte, another one of those books that I couldn't get out of my head. I adored it. I don't think I loved it as much as Jane Eyre, and I don't know that I would include it amongst my other favorite classics, so I'm leaving this one off. Oh god. Okay, number five was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I loved this, just like the rest of Booktube, but it's not one of my all-time favorites. That felt a little like blasphemy, honestly. Number four was Middle March by George Eliot, which is one I'm going to keep around for consideration because I think about that book all the time. I want to dive back into it so badly. Number three was The 
the Unseen World by Liz Moore, which was such a fantastic book. That was another one that was so popular around booktube around that time. I actually just made my husband read this one and he really enjoyed it. Obviously, I did too. It was my third favorite of the year. But I don't really feel that pull to reread it. And for me, that's pretty important when we're talking about a favorite book, one of my best of the past five years. I want it to be something that I want to go back to. And I don't really feel that all that much with The Unseen World. And unfortunately, that's also the case with The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. It's probably my favorite Diane Setterfield novel. She is amazing. I love that book. But I don't really feel a need to go back to that one. But one that I know is going to stick around is my top fiction book of 2018, which was North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell, which is the book that ties with Wives and Daughters as being my favorite classic. So 2018 nonfiction number 10 was Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain. That was such an interesting book. Definitely one you need to read if you like food writing. Not a favorite. The Big Short by Michael Lewis, which somehow made high finance understandable. Not a favorite though. Smarter, Faster, Better by Charles Duhigg. Not quite as good as The Power of Habit. So definitely not going to be considered for the final list. But number seven, The Triumph of Seeds by Thor Hansen. 2018 was the year that I discovered Thor Hansen as one of my favorite natural history writers. I have The Triumph of Seeds at number seven and then Feathers at number six. But of the two of those, I am going to put The Triumph of Seeds on my consideration list. Number five was Smoke It's In Your Eyes by Caitlin Doty. I'm going to keep this one around for consideration because it was absolutely fantastic. Number four was Owl by William Service. Another one I want to keep around for another round because I loved it so much. I still laugh thinking about that book. Number three was The Curse of the Boyfriend Sweater by Alana Oaken. That was such a sweet essay collection. And I know looking back now that that one really resonated with me because of what I was going through at the time. She talked a lot in her essays about losing her grandmother and I had just lost my grandmother. So I know I connected to it particularly strongly. So it was so important to me that year, but an all-time favorite it is not. My second favorite nonfiction book of 2018 was Eggshell Skull by Brie Lee, which was phenomenal, but I'm not going to keep it around for consideration. But my favorite nonfiction book of 2018 is definitely staying around because it's Lab Girl by Hope Jaren. Oh my god, I love that book so much. All right, we're moving on to the final two lists, narrowing it down, and then we'll have the final list of contenders, and I'll narrow it down one more time. So 2019 fiction, my 10th favorite was The Women of the Copper Country by Mary Doria Russell. Still highly recommend that one. Not a favorite. Number nine was Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Another wonderful one, but unfortunately not a favorite. The same thing goes for Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which was not even quite as good as The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So if I'm not including that one, I definitely won't include this one. Number seven was The Body Lies by Joe Baker. So fantastic, but not a favorite. Number six was Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield, which once again, if I'm not including the 13th tale, then I definitely won't be including this one. All right, number five, was Fingersmith by Sarah Waters. And I said in my wrap up video that that is probably now my second favorite Sarah Waters novel. So as this one is my second favorite Sarah Waters novel, I'm not going to include it as a contender. Number four was The Sparrow by Mary Doria Russell, which I'm definitely keeping around. That book is tremendous. Now my third favorite fiction book of 2019 was City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. And this is where things get a little bit tricky because I loved this book. I thought it was actually very similar to my all-time favorite book, Rules of Civility by Immortals, which I read before I got on booktube, so it is not under consideration in this video. But I am not sure how this book is going to stand the test of time. Am I still going to love it as much this time next year as I do right now? And so I can't include this one. My second favorite, The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton, is absolutely still sticking around, probably an all-time favorite classic. And the same goes for my number one favorite, which was Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. I still love this with all of my heart. And then finally, we have the last list that I'm going to go through in its entirety. My 10th favorite nonfiction book of 2019 was Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. So amazing, not a favorite. Same goes for The Good Neighbor by Maxwell King. I loved it so much, but I'm not going to include it on my favorites list. I feel like I'm a broken record here because number eight was How to Catch a Mole by Mark Hammer, which was so beautiful, but I just don't think I loved it quite enough. Like it doesn't come up to the level of Lab Girl. Number seven was Strapless by Deborah Davis, which was one of the most interesting histories that I've ever read. 
but it's not an all-time favorite nonfiction book. Number six was Saving Jemima by Julie Zickfuss. I'm also not including this one. Hammerhead by Nina McLaughlin was in at number five. Great, not including it. Same thing for number four, Rough Magic by Laura Pryor Palmer. I'm really surprised I don't want to include all of these. I recommend all of them again, but I just don't think I love them quite enough. This next one is really hard because number three was Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson, which is still hitting me so hard thinking about that book but I don't think I'm going to include it on the final list. But number two, 84 Charing Cross Road by Helene Hanf, absolutely is going to keep going. Same thing for my favorite nonfiction book of 2019, which was Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Gottlieb. All right, so I just went through and divided the remaining books into fiction and nonfiction categories. In each of those categories, I'm going to narrow these books down to the top 10. We will start with nonfiction because I only have 12 remaining for nonfiction. So right off the bat, I know that Self is Shallow and Self Absorbed is getting kicked off the list. So we're left with H is for Hawk, Moonwalking with Einstein, The Soul of an Octopus, How Music Got Free, Being Mortal, The Triumph of Seeds, Smoke It's in Your Eyes, Owl, Lab Girl, 84 Charing Cross Road, and Maybe You Should Talk to Someone. And that's only 11, so I only need to eliminate one of those. So which one of these goes? Well, definitely not H is for Hawk, because as I said, that's probably my favorite nonfiction book. Not Moonwalking with Einstein, that one definitely belongs there. Same with The Soul of an Octopus. How Music Got Free, I really want to keep. I mean, it's definitely one I could get rid of, but I really want to keep it. Be Immortal by Atul Gawande, that one needs to stay. Triumph of Seeds could go, but ideally I would like to see it stay. Smoke It's in Your Eyes, uh, that one's going to stay, I just decided. Owl by William Service. I think that one can go because the remaining three are Lab Girl, 84 Charing Cross Road, and Maybe You Should Talk to Someone, and those ones are non-negotiable. So... I'm removing Owl by William Service. Now fiction is going to be a lot harder because I currently have 18 titles, so I need to get rid of eight of them. This is going to be awful. All right, so right away, Murder at the Brightwell by Ashley Weaver. I love that series, but that one's gonna have to go. The Likeness by Tana French is amazing. If I had a top 20, it would be in the top 20 but I'm taking it off. Uprooted by Naomi Novik stays. The Interestings by Meg Wallitzer stays. And The Czar of Love and Techno by Anthony Mara stays. They have to stay. The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. That one's gonna have to go. I'm just not gonna have room. Euphoria by Lily King. I'm going to keep for now. I'm going to see if I have room for it. Oh, I actually only have 17 because I forgot to delete one. That's good news. I accidentally left the ecliptic on there. Okay, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. That's my favorite Jane Austen novel. That has to stay. Longborn by Joe Baker, though, that one doesn't have to stay. And neither does The Glorious Heresies by Lisa McInerney. This stinks. Margaret the First by Danielle Dutton. I want to see if there's room for that one. Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell has to be on there. Middle March I'll keep for now if I have room. North and South definitely stays. Things are getting really tricky here. Okay, The Sparrow by Mary Doria Russell. That one can go. I hate this a little bit. Okay. The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton. I suppose that one has to go as well. All right, I've narrowed it down to my top 10. Do I feel good about this top 10? I think I do, honestly. I had to get rid of some books that I really seriously loved. So you know that these are really the best of the best. And if you're asking why I don't just extend it to make a top 20, I really, really wanted to narrow it down. I think that that's a fun challenge, or in this case, a not so fun challenge. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to go through and rank these because that would just be like absolutely pulling teeth. This was impossible enough already. But I will tell you which are my 10 favorite fiction and 10 favorite nonfiction books since I've been on booktube. For fiction, we have Uprooted by Naomi Novik, The Interestings by Meg Wallitzer, The Czar of Love and Techno by Anthony Mara, Euphoria by Lily King, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Margaret the First by Danielle Dutton, Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell, Middlemarch by George Eliot, North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell, and Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. A lot of classics on there, as you can probably tell. And then my top 10 nonfiction books are H is for Hawk by Helen MacDonald, Moonwalking with Einstein by Joshua Foer, The Soul of an Octopus by Cy Montgomery, How Music Got Free by Stephen Witt, Being Mortal by Atul Gawande, The Triumph of Seeds by Thor Hansen, Smoke It's in Your Eyes by Caitlin Doty, Lab Girl by Hope Jarin, 84 Charing Cross Road by Helene Hanf, 
and Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Gottlieb. So I suppose those are the 20 best books that I've read in the five years that I have been on booktube. Please keep in mind that I did read quite a few books before I got on booktube, so some of my all-time favorite books are not on either of these lists. But I think these two lists are pretty good summaries of all the amazing reading that I've done since I joined booktube. A lot of these books I read because of booktube. So as I begin to close out this video, I want to thank you for watching and coming along with me on this journey into the past. But also I want to thank all of you more generally for your support over the past five years. I say this pretty much every year, but it just continues being true and even gets more true as the years go on that this channel is such a big part of my life. I love doing this so much. I love making videos. I love having the chance to be creative. I love having people that I can talk books with. It has provided something to my life that I didn't even know was missing. I'm intensely grateful. Thank you all so much for your continued supports and encouragements. I love being here and thank you for giving me the ability to do that. As always, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to put that in the comment section below. But if you would like to find me somewhere other than YouTube, I am on a variety of different places on social media and the links to all of my profiles will be linked in the description box below. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.